Hi guys, I'm back down the allotment today. A bit of an experiment I'm doing with uh, mushrooms. I've seen loads of videos on how to grow mushrooms and um, I thought oh, I'm gonna give that a try. Now, I haven't done it all exactly, exactly like they've said, but I have done what I've been able to. Um, I'm sure it's the same with everybody, you can't do it always exactly to plan, like I couldn't get some of the logs um, freshly cut, they are, you know, a few months old. But anyway, I'll show you what I'm doing because I've had a bit of a tidy up down here and um, everything's looking really good. But um, these mushroom logs, oh I didn't go and get the straw, that's what I needed. All right, so I'm filming in here today because of all the sort of noise outside. I've got trees rustling, I've got the car traffic humming of that, and a plane somewhere or other. So I thought I'd come in here, it might just be a bit clearer for you. So these mushrooms, I'm growing a couple of sorts. We've got the oyster mushroom. Now I got these off eBay around the five pound mark. They are literally like little dowels. Um, let me get that close to the camera for you. Can you see those little dowels? And they've got the mycelium all over them. That's the oyster mushroom. And then I also got shiitake. And that's where I got them from. And they just dowels with the mycelium on. I did put mine in the fridge for a couple of days. I don't know if that was the right thing to do because I couldn't do, um, I couldn't get them planted sort of thing straight away. But anyway, they, they, they all were really, really white and did really well. But now I've had them out, they've, they've gone not so white. Anyway, a few things you'll need for this. Now you can do it a few different ways. You can get some, you know, like a, a bit of a raised bed or an area put some straw down um, and you can get the mycelium on its own and sprinkle that in between and another layer of straw and wet it down and um, I've seen people do it like that. I've never seen the end of the video or the next video to say all oh, this worked. Um, they only ever show you how to do it with, without the results so hopefully over the next period of time I'll be able to update you on how these go few other things you may need. I'm doing mine in logs. Now again you're supposed to have the logs like so thick with um, freshly cut hardwood. Now I have got hardwood, I've got some ash and some beech I think it is, something like that, and um, they're not freshly cut because again you can only get what you can get and, and this I'm afraid was cut quite a while back, like a couple of months back. So I'll just again have to see how it goes um, and with that method you drill holes in the logs so far apart every up the log and then you put wax on to seal the holes where you put the mycelium dowels in the little drill holes um, to stop any other sort of contamination and fungi getting in there and um, I used a standard beeswax Standard beeswax, um, got that from eBay, and melted that down and just, just then put that on. So there you go, that's what I got. And I'll take you out now and show you the logs. Um, I probably won't put any sound on this bit while I'm showing you the logs, purely because it's like blowing a bit of a gale out there and it's just gonna be like really, really noisy. So I'll go and show you what the logs are looking like.
I've also still got tons of beans and I'm still eating also the little tomatoes I just keep picking off now because I've had a bit of blight but um, they're all right to eat fresh. I haven't got blight on this one obviously, the ones with blight on I've thrown away. Um, but I'm going to be stripping off the rest of my tomatoes today and taking green ones home and look at my beans. So it's still going absolutely mad, I'll show you. Still got so many beans all the way through. Excuse the wind, it's a bit of a windy day. Right, look, beans everywhere. Still absolutely tons of beans, but this is what I found really weird. Look, beans everywhere, everywhere beans. What I found really weird was all this black fly at this time of year. Absolutely tons of black fly have just descended on my one end bean plant here. But anyway, that's that. But all the rest, I've still got loads of beans and loads of beans still coming. Here we go. I'll pick that one. Oh, but I'm sure they'll probably be finishing soon. Still got lots more to pick. But they're looking fantastic. Love my beans. I finally got them all standing up in their corners. I will put a piece of um, like lath around in a square just to support them a little bit more. Get a closer look. Right now the ones with the band, the black bands round are the oyster mushrooms. And they're in those plugs there, look. Down to there. So they're all in there. Now this log should get a nice bit of moisture from, I've got it down to the actual uh, mud clay ground underneath, which is really stodgy actually, a lot stodgier than I thought it would be. Um, but there they are, so they should all keep nice and moist in the bottom. I will water these now and make sure they're nice and wet, but I'm sure over the winter they're going to get pretty wet anyway. So I'm really, really pleased. I think it looks fab and it actually gives a bit of sort of like structure to the place as well a bit of height which is nice and that is in the asparagus bed so i'm hoping the asparagus will just grow and do its thing as well as the mushrooms so this is me melting the wax i've got the beeswax and i'm just melting that a little bit so i can paint i did these little ones at home because it was just easy to do all at home because my husband was there with the drill to drill the dowel holes but to paint the tops i um I'm doing this down at the allotment so I'm going to paint the tops of these and this is to try to stop any other um, fungus and stuff inhabiting the logs. Now I'm just, just bubbling away there so I'll just do that on low. Um, from all the videos I've watched this obviously isn't a how to this is just what I am doing. Um, they say that the log has to be freshly cut, um, you're best if the bark is intact. As you can see, my bark is not. The logs are a little bit um, gnarly and um, this is all I could get, guys. So sometimes you've just got to work with what you've got. So we'll see how this goes, but to try and stop other moulds and spores getting into the log, I have obviously um, put wax over the dowels and I will be painting it on the top of the logs as well. I haven't painted it on the bottom of the logs where it goes into the ground um, and I haven't knocked off all of the um, bits of other, um, I don't know what you call it, bits of other growth on the tree. I've just left them pretty natural. Um, so there you go, that's the experiment and that's where I'm starting from. How's this looking? Ah, uh, it's starting to melt. So I'm just gonna keep melting this and then I'm going to paint the tops of the logs.
So there we go, I've painted all of the tops now of the logs, so they are protected, but as I said before, there are like lots of nicks and cuts on some of the logs, some are better than others, and we'll just see how it goes. How exciting guys, I could have some mushrooms soon. So these are the mycelliums I'm putting in. You can see the, the fur of the mycelium growing on the dowels. So I'm going to place these all the way through, do half with the shiitake, half with the oyster. So the poles with my straps on, well, to identify them this side are the oysters. So I'll have oyster this side and shiitake that side. Now this straw needs to be damped down. We have um, really uh, wet weather right now so I'm not actually going to water it out of the trough I'm going to let the rain do that and I'm just going to take a dowel and pop it inside the straw and bury it in there I'll probably have to put some netting over this as well to stop it blowing away I've got quite a few dowels left, so I'm going to be quite liberal with them. And the mycelium on these dowels should colonise and grow through the hollow bits of the straw. This is why we use straw. It's an untreated straw. It's just natural. Very excited to be get to be get mushrooms. I can't wait to see how this turns out if it's successful. Because I've seen so many of these mushroom ones online, yet they've never shown you the actual finished product, as in like loads of mushrooms or them harvesting them. So I will update you once a month or so on how these are doing and hopefully before too long not before too long we will have some oyster and shiitake mushrooms oh very excited i'll get the oyster ones in now over the other side As you can see I've got all the straw in now as well obviously this is a few days later because it just took me time to get it all sorted and there it is 
totally finished. Well, I might put a bit of netting over the top. I'm worried it's all going to blow away. Um, so I'll probably put some netting over the top now and um, let the rain water it in. Okay, there's a close up so you can see the netting over the top. That's what the whole bed looks like. These little wood strips on each side just holding holding this taut. So there you go. We'll wait for it to rain and we'll watch closely for any mushrooms coming through and obviously also the dowels. So we've got a little, it's sort of like a double whammy here really. So yes, got a bit of a double whammy here with the log uh, mushrooms and the straw mushrooms in the raised bed. So we'll see which are the best. Well, let's hope we get some mushrooms. Obviously I will update you as thing go, things go on. Um, I'm not sure I've actually done the right time of year, but anyway, that's that. It'll just hopefully become natural and just do its thing as the mycelium grows through the tree. Um, so. If you'd like to see the journey and some updates on how it's going and if we get any mushrooms in like a year's time, I don't know how long it's going to take, um, subscribe and I'll see you next time on the allotment. <laughs>